All right, so this will be the first of a few videos where I'm going to record for you having to do with operations on sets. And in particular, we'll look at what are called binary operations on sets. Um, now, uh, we've been using the word binary to talk about, you know, base two arithmetic. So I want to, I want to clarify that this is a different meaning of binary here. So this is not not a base two thing. Uh, this is binary. Well, I mean, it's binary in the sense of there will be two things involved. So we'll see what this means. Um, so generally, this idea of of an operation on a on a set, right? So remember that if we have if we have a set, this is just some, you know, some bunch of objects, right? So we've got a bunch of things. And it's a bunch of things that, that have been collected together, and, and I guess they should probably have something in common, although really you can build a set out of anything. So you might have a set that contains, I don't know, like five and seven, and also like, you know, a cat and a Buick, I don't know, you can put whatever you want. But, but generally, if you're dealing with sets mathematically, you're, you're not going to bother grouping things into a set unless they, they have some sort of traits in common, right? You, you're putting these together for a reason. Um, so you've got a bunch of things in your set, and then an operation on that set. So an operation on a set is going to be combining um, old things to get new ones. Uh, this is, you know, I mean, this is overly simplistic, but this is one way of thinking about it. So, and, and, and if it's a, if we're using this word binary, so binary means that when you're combining things, well, you're going to combine two things. Okay? And we have lots of, opera, uh, lots of examples of binary operations, right? Things that you've seen before. Maybe you don't think of them in this language, but we have some very simple examples, right? So probably the most e basic example we could think of would be the operation of plus on, let's say, the set of natural numbers, right? Um, so we, we know how this works. So we, kind of the input is going to be two, two numbers. So let's call those numbers maybe m and n. And remember, if we want to say that they're natural numbers, we put this funny e, say so m and n are natural numbers, or elements of the natural numbers. And the output is going to be m plus n. And one of the things that, that we, of course, know, and this is, for, for some operations, this isn't necessarily obvious from the outset, but it will be in this case. Um, the sum of two natural numbers is also a natural number, right? So, you know, an example within our example, if we do something like 3 plus 5, so 3 and 5 are two natural numbers, we add them together, we get 8. Okay, and everyone's happy, right? Um, now, of course, that's not the only binary operation that we know for the natural numbers. What are some other ones? Well, we could also do multiplication. Stick with the natural numbers. We'll look at other sets later on. So we could do multiplication, right? So we could do something like... 3 times 5, and we get 15. So again, we get a natural number. We could do subtraction. Um, although now you got to be a bit careful, right? If I did 3 minus 5, okay, so then I get, well, we know that we could, you know, we can call that minus 2. Um, but we have to think a little bit here about what we're doing because in this case, this is not in the natural numbers anymore, right? So the natural numbers 
uh, are just the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Um, and so if you, as soon as you get a negative number, you're no longer in the natural numbers, you're, you're in the integers. Um, so we're going to, in later videos, we're going to talk about, you know, some of the properties that a binary operation might have. Uh, one of the important properties that that a binary operation might have, and let's list that. Um, so here's a basic property. So a basic property is called closure, okay? So there's this closure property. So what does it mean um, for, for an op operation to be closed or or what we might say is, is the set is closed under the operation. So we might say that uh, a set S is uh, closed under whatever our operation is. I'm not sure why we use the word under, but we do. So we say closed under whatever our binary is. So we say closed under addition, closed under multiplication. Uh, so it's closed under an operation if the, uh, you know, if your output, output is also in the same set, right? So being closed under an operation just means that the output belongs to the same set as the inputs, right? So if you add two natural numbers, you get another natural number. So the natural numbers are closed under addition. Same thing for multiplication, right? Um, the output belongs to the same set as the inputs. Subtraction, not always, right? Um, sometimes, yes, if the, if the first number is bigger than the second number, then, then it, you do still get a natural number. But if the second number is bigger, then the difference is no longer a natural number, right? You land outside the set. Um, and so this is something that you have to, to think about. And in some cases, I guess you might have to be even more careful because, you know, here at, at least we, we have a way of describing minus, we know what minus two is because the natural numbers sit inside of a larger set. Um, and so we can, say, we can still give that answer of minus two. We know what minus two means because we've seen the integers before. Uh, but it, it could happen if you're kind of out there, you're doing, let's say you're doing research in math, you're pushing boundaries, you, you know, you're working with some, some set of objects and you've invented some new uh, way of combining those objects, you know, to combining objects to get new ones. And, and you realize that some of the time when you combine them, you know, the, the new thing doesn't belong to the same set as the old things. And then you might have to start inventing new sets. You might have to start inventing new types of objects that you hadn't thought of before um, because you need some way of describing these outputs. That is something that occasionally happens. Um, one, one example we might think of in this context is, you know, we could, you know, we can, you know, think back maybe historically that, you know, in a lot of the historical systems, uh, maybe the Chinese system being an exception, uh, there was no notion of negative numbers, right? So in, in a lot of societies, they, they had writing systems for, for numbers, they had counting systems, but they didn't have negative numbers. Maybe they didn't have zero. And, and so then you imagine yourself li living in a world where nobody knows what a negative number is. How do you make sense of the output of this operation? Well, maybe you just don't. Maybe you just refuse to consider that operation. Um, but maybe somebody comes along that says, no, I really do want to consider that operation, so I've got to start inventing new numbers, numbers that we hadn't considered before, right? Um, Another, another one that might come up is maybe you're doing division, right? You're working, let's say, over the natural numbers or you're working over the integers and you want to do division. Well, chances are when you divide one number by another, um, you know, your number is not going to divide evenly. There's going to be a remainder. Maybe you have to start talking about fractions, right? And again, you're, you have to invent new types of numbers because sometimes these operations, they take you outside of your set. Um, and that, well, I'm mentioning this because this is maybe a perspective that we want to take. As we start enlarging our, our sets of numbers, we might want to think about why do you want to consider these successively larger sets of numbers? And probably one good reason to do it is that 
you have these binary operations that are perfectly natural to consider and sometimes your set isn't closed under that operation and so you have to enlarge the set to include all the outputs that you get, right? So um, sometimes your output stays in, sometimes it goes out and if the output is not in the set, if your set isn't closed under the operation, um, then maybe you need a bigger set. Um, so in the next video we'll talk about some of the properties that binary operations can have and we'll do another video where we look at some examples and, and maybe some examples that are, you know, a little bit more strange than addition or, or, or multiplication, you know, ones that you perhaps haven't seen before and, and maybe ones that nobody actually uses other than to give examples of other binary operations. We might do some of those and, and we'll look at some of the properties. Uh, and by the way, um, I mentioned that, you know, we're talking specifically with these binary operations here, combining two things to get one. And that's because, you know, we, we do want to model addition and multiplication as our kind of main operations. So we're going to stick mostly with binary. Um, you don't have to stick with binary. There are other examples that you can do. There's, um, you could talk about a, uh, you could talk about a unary operation, which is, well, one thing, you know, you have one thing that becomes a new thing. Um, actually, one example that you might think of here would be, you know, putting a minus sign in front of something, right? So, so you could think of, you know, you know, minus applied to say four, right? So you take four and you apply the, this negation operation and you get minus four. That's an example of a unary operation. Um, and, and you could, you know, you do unary, binary, you could also, you could talk about, say, ternary, but there aren't very many interesting examples that people use regularly um, of ternary operations. But you could, you could keep going like this if you wanted to, you know, varying the number of inputs. Um, but uh, we will focus primarily on binary operations in this course.